I'm Brian. And I'm Sarah. And this is Duck River Homestead. Today we are at the Homestead Festival down here in Columbia, Tennessee, which is right around the corner from our house. <laughs> I'm a homeschool dropout, so I haven't done that. Hey, my son was sitting on the sofa and I said, what are you doing? Have you ever had your chickens in your house? So I'm here with our friends Candace and Ben and they have this company called Farmstead Company and so why don't you tell us what we do. Yeah so we're here at the HOA conference and just kind of promoting our business and we basically help people build their own farm whether that's two acres or a hundred acres. We come and evaluate the property, consult with the customer and then we implement so we can build the road, the utilities, we help you figure out where to put the house in retrospect to the garden and the animals that you want. So some people like chickens, some people don't, some people want pigs. We kind of help you go through that process and make the land work for you. Around here, all the nice little farms have been bought up and so you're left with raw land. And so a lot of people don't know what to do with that. So we will help you clear the land, put utilities in, put the road in, build the house, build the barn, put the fences up and you know take you a to b or just little pieces of that help that you do. build your dream yeah awesome well <laughs> thank you guys so much thank you and uh, we'll see you later so we just finished up the last lecture uh it was with uh joel salatin and the thunderclouds have now rolled in and it's starting to uh, drizzle on us so i'm gonna take off and we'll be back in the morning so we just got back from the Homestead Festival and wanted to talk a little bit about our experience. This is the leftovers of my pamphlet or whatever they want to call it. So you can see here's the schedule. It was, it was a little sweaty today so um, it's this is a little sweaty and that's okay it still works. The day started out with the opening ceremony at the main stage. We got there at 827 just in time to sit down and listen to it. We just waited and waited and waited and started to roast in the sun and there's humidity and it was gross and so I went and found a tent and and went to a different speaker. Do we know if they ever even got to? So you didn't even stay? No like a few minutes later everyone in the row left because they wanted to go to because we knew that they wouldn't start later we'll start out the morning with a combination of Kaylee Richardson learning about beekeeping and Ted Gentry okay so I was gonna go to the uh, Ted Gentry learning about cattle and it was just disgustingly hot outside so I went to tent C and it seemed to cool down so I went back to, to the talk about cattle Teddy talked about the South Pole breed of, of cattle and how uh, it's just genetically better than a lot of other stuff, which is interesting. For my first talk, I saw Anne from Farm Girl in the Making and she was talking about something similar to last year's talk. I actually think it might have had the same basis, but I went and I still found it beneficial, less overwhelming probably because I was able to apply some of the stuff from last year's talk. It was still helpful for the reminder of kind of like systems, what, what to prioritize as when it comes to preserving and so how canning actually actually isn't your best place to be putting most of your time and your preserving. Mm -hmm. How it's actually like fermentation, cold food storage, all the canning is pretty low on there. And so it's kind of flipped in the way it's presented often or marketed. Helpful to hear that again. 
One of the things that I noticed in Anne's talk that I either didn't pick up on last time or it was new was how she talked about how she focuses on preserving differently in the spring versus the summer versus the fall. She focused a lot on being intentional and I feel like we've often been told how intentional we are in general. That leads well into homestead life. Sarah and I went and saw Daniel Salatin and learned about sort of how to lay out your homestead. So this was really interesting uh, for me. I thought a lot about laying out, make sure that we have power and water in the right places. Fortunately, the way that we have two water taps is really beneficial for how we're going to need to lay out our pastures for cattle which hopefully we'll be getting sometime next year. There's a really good, efficient way that we can use our land that, is, that pretty much already exists right now. And there's not too much fencing that we're gonna be able to have to do, and then we'll be able to do electric fencing to rotate them, which is gonna be really efficient and fast and easy. I found it helpful how he went through a list of things, like seven to 10 things that you... Oh, the, um, it's like the list of permanents. Yes, no. It was just nice to see someone lay out. I mean, you hear, don't put the cart before the horse, but to have someone spell out, here are the patterns and systems and the order you need to go in, and here's what you can control, and here's what you can't. And I liked how he walked through that first, and then the second half, it was like he actually whiteboarded it with a real person's. Mm -hmm. Lunch break was a lot better than last year. We didn't have mile-long lines. Uh, they were long, but they weren't. They were quick, which is good. So after lunch, I went and saw Justin Rhodes. He talked about raising chickens from uh, from hatching to the plate, essentially. He talked a little bit about how often chickens die, and it's pretty common, which we've experienced ourselves. So the last lecture of the day for me was Joel Salatin. His topic was uh, how to work with children, and specifically your your children, not like child labor, but you know. So uh, he gave some tips on on how to raise your children in a homestead so that they would actually like to go back to a homestead as when they when they're older. Most children end up hating the farm life because they're not paid for the work that they do that brings in income for the for the homestead. So specifically, like giving them chores or tasks like collecting eggs and paying them six dollars per dozen eggs but they have to be there has to be expectations that they have to be clean and things like that which also incentivizes them to clean the coop uh, take care of the chickens and take make sure that they're doing it you know before the, the the chickens poop on the eggs and so you set the expectations that this is what you're looking for but you're also paying them well for the work so the last talk that I went to was with Dr. Hutton. He actually is local. We go to his clinic. So it was interesting to see him from like outside of that setting, I yeah. guess. Um, he had one of his friends with him. His name was Todd. I don't remember his last name. I liked the second half of their talk because they got specifically into perennials where we currently live. So they went into Willow, Pawpaw, Smooth Sumac. They walked through each of the seven and the benefits that it has, different ways that you can use it and how you can use them. Leaf to root, maybe. Okay. <laughs> and so that was beneficial. And Todd talked about how his farm is certified organic, but they're also the only certified regenerative farm in Tennessee at the moment and he talked about some of the trials that they're doing. They're currently in a 14-year trial looking at how to... Regenerate topsoil. Yes, so that was interesting. He talked about how with all of his perennials, his elderberry, his oak, his mulberry, all of them, he sets them up in like this, you know how like a dice is with the five? Mm -hmm. He sets them all up and then he lets them grow to six to seven feet high and then he makes hedgerows out of them. Oh and how it is helpful to for like wind and also your animals being able to feed themselves versus you having bring, to bring the food to them mm -hmm. and the benefits of different cheese that you can make from them, how some can help with arthritis. How, so basically how these perennials can help not only you but also your animals. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.